Hi, today we're looking at photographing kingfishers but from one of these rent-a-hide opportunities. There's lots of setups for kingfisher currently. I don't know if they're all active at this moment but there's one in Dumfries and Galloway and Devon and Norfolk and Staffordshire and uh, it's a very popular subject. As far as I'm aware this one, Droitwich in Worcestershire, was the first commercial kingfisher hide. It was started by Mark Hancock many years ago. He was a superb photographer and a proper field working photographer. He did projects and liked sitting in hides. As far as I know he never did talks. So I can remember thinking if I ever see him doing a talk I'd, I'd have to go and see him because he does the sort of the same sort of photography that I enjoy doing really. Anyway he's unfortunately died quite young and it's been run by other people since but it's under new management at the moment um, Sharon the farmer is, is running it she's not a photographer but she's well organized and I think a good businesswoman she's built this new hide it's made out of tin tin sheets and it's got capacity for six photographers there's six apertures you're looking out of and very comfy very spacious we're not shooting through one-way glass there's a perspex sheet and a big aperture cut in the perspex sheet and then just scrimming hanging all over the the perspex and over the gap as well and it's this very fine netting we've got it on a couple of our wooden hides and from outside you can't see through it but from inside you actually have a very very clear view so I can see the whole river and the whole setup if the kingfishers come in I'm, I'm going to see it very easily. There's also down by my feet the possibility of opening up a sliding door and then you're down at ground level so you'd be level with the water and for the diving shots that's really where you want to be. I'm just starting off with the pictures on the perch it also gives me opportunity to try out this Sony A1 camera with a 200 to 600 zoom which I'm far from used to. There's over 50 pages of settings in this camera and that's going to take some while to understand. A couple of things I'd do differently if I was to come again is to bring a bean bag. It's not suitable for tripods. There's a big metal shelf in front of the lens apertures and um, you, you can't get the tripod in so bean bags in the car I can walk back to the car it's only a two minute walk but I, I found a couple of cushions here which are, are doing the job at the moment and the other thing I'd have done is bought some of my own perches there's lots of perches around you can change them um, but I tend to like thin perches and most of them are quite thick branches and I might have bought something that was green as well but at some point I can get out of the hide and maybe find something suitable but I don't want to do that until things get started. There's a green woodpecker calling constantly up there. You might be able to hear it in the background from time to time. I always say when you hear a green woodpecker calling from one spot in the early spring or even from the late winter, uh, eventually that's where it will end up nesting. But it should be nesting already by now. So why it's calling so constantly, I don't know. So I did have a bit of a wait before the kingfisher came in, but it did duly arrive. There's a diary in the hide where you can record how many visits you get. And I did skim through it, and it's quite variable. But 15, 20 visits some days, and only one or two the next. I had five visits and about 20 dives into the water. But I did choose an awful day for it. It was rainy, it was windy, and it's the wind that will put the kingfisher off more than the rain they're more likely to stay inside the more wooded areas rather than come out into the open. But you can see the rain coming down, it was very heavy at times. 
Also, when people don't get many visits, you don't know how long they were in the hide. This is a male, has an all black bill. The female will have a bit of red on the lower mandible. All of the slow motion footage is taken with the Sony A1 and the 200 to 600 zoom. I'm shooting at 4K, 120 frames per second, and there is a huge difference in the quality from what I was getting in slow motion with my Micro Four Third system, which was only high definition, but the quality also deteriorated when you went into slow motion. In 4K with the, the Sony A1, it looks just as good as normal speed. Very impressed. This was the perch that was already in place when I arrived and it looked better once it got wet because it darkened it down. It was a bit pale when it was dry. They don't always succeed when they dive into the water. And you can imagine in a wild river their success rate will be far less than it is in a situation like this where it's a very shallow bit of water they're diving into. Bit more elevation, flew up in the air and then downwards, and a bit of success. It's amazing how often when kingfishers land they've got their backs to you with a fish in the bill, and you just hope they're going to turn around like this, they don't always. Now what this male never did was stunned the fish, normally they smack them against the branch to stun them before they swallow them. But each fish he caught, he just swallowed it without whacking it on the branch first. I changed the perch. I got out of the hide at one point and found a, a thinner perch with a bit of greenery on it. And I'm always much happier with that sort of perch. I don't like thick, chunky perches. It makes little difference to the kingfisher, but they do require a certain height. I like to put my perches about five foot above the water. That gives them the speed and the momentum they need to catch the fish. So after my first visit, I lowered the camera down to the floor, opened the gap so you can poke the camera out. Now you're more or less at water level. And you can see this is the, the pool in front of the hide. And we've got the perch to the left and it's all very well built and it's good to have that wooden walking platform to the side so you don't get your feet muddy every time you go out. The fish are put in that darker bowl with the black lip around it. That wide black lip stops the fish swimming across it because it's just too shallow for them. So that bowl has to be positioned at just the right depth underneath the water but only just you just want about a millimetre of water on that black lip. The bird is going to go higher up the branch here because he wants more elevation. So he's trying to get as high as he can and quite often when he left the perch to dive in he goes upwards a little bit. So he's going up there and then down. It's not so much to give them the penetration into the water, I think it's to give them the speed they need because the fish is going to be trying to escape as it comes down. Lens-wise at this site, you need something like a 500 to a 600 mil on a full chip camera. That's about the right distance. I do enjoy watching birds in slow motion, they look so different. So go back to the original perch, again it goes up in the air a little bit to get that momentum, but he went into the water then too slowly. I'm sure the fish saw him coming and was able to get out of the way. He needs more speed in the dive. 
for the footage and for stills pictures as the bird hits the water, you've got to pre-focus. You can't use autofocus there, so you pre-focus in the middle of that bowl. And if you're taking stills pictures, shutter speed wise, well, you'd be looking for four thousandths of a second and upwards. Normally for birds in flight, I go for two and a half thousandths of a second as my starting point. But for kingfisher diving, I'd want to go a little bit faster. You can see the raindrops coming down into the water. Love the way he bounces off the water there. So I'll just show you a handful of stills pictures I took on the day. I didn't really need any more stills pictures of kingfishers. I've got many thousands. It's a bird I've worked on quite a lot over the years. But it was useful to test out this Sony A1 and try to become familiar with it. And I didn't attempt any diving pictures as, as still photographs at all. It was too miserable a day. Shutter speeds were far too slow. So I'll show you some diving pictures I've taken over the years using a slightly different method for containing the fish under the water. We had a bowl that we could lower into the water with an electric motor. So when the kingfisher was away, it would be slightly above the water so the fish couldn't escape. And then when it arrived, we'd press a switch and the motor would lower the bowl into the water. Thanks for watching.